Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Transform Your Confidence show. This is a show about holistic leadership and advocacy, and I'm your host, Raj Gurn. In case you don't know who I am because you happen to miss the first episode, here's a bit about me. I'm a longtime serial entrepreneur who specializes in mindset, branding, media, communications, and marketing, and I firmly believe that great leadership and advocacy is predicated on the mission that everyone must benefit across the entire food chain. I'm an award-winning C-suite entrepreneur who has worked in the media and event space for the past 20 years with many Fortune 500, celebrity, and thought leader clients from around the world. At this point in my life, I seek to share many insights and resources with anyone who wants to learn about holistic leadership and advocacy in a newly launched online community at the OpenChessConfidenceAcademy.com. Here, I've mandated my entire organization to provide products and services and support in the center um, of an ecosystem that is surrounded by knowledge, action, and accountability. My goal with this show is to pull back the curtain, and I mean way back, to reveal how today's change makers are leading with intention and creating meaningful environments that serve everyone. I also want to help you reimagine what your life could be if you had a constant view from the top of the mountain. Think about that for a second, folks. Always having a view from the top of the mountain. I believe that in order to get there and stay there, you need to learn from those who have a constant, unobstructed view from the top. These are not just the usual suspects, people that you see on social media and in the news. Um, these are the people that sit in the middle of the volcano as the lava explodes through the top of the mountain. These are the crazy ones who change the world. And they are also the ones I want you to meet through this show. I'm mandating myself to ensure that this show is dedicated to a deep dive with people that have truly changed the way that business and life operates. Meet the Manaroshan, the globally renowned beauty educator and founder of the Dress Your Face Empire. She is the single most sought after international beauty educator in the world as the founder of the world's first and the number one most subscribed to live online makeup and hair school at dressyourfacelive.com. Here, she has changed the game by bringing affordable top-tier beauty education right to people's homes 24 hours a day. The school has over 100,000 plus past and present students worldwide, making the Manna the number one ranked makeup and hair artistry educator in the world. She has taught more students as a single instructor than most beauty schools combined. So what I recommend that you do guys is grab a pen, grab some paper, put your headphones on and shut the door because this episode is packed with many actionable tips that you can incorporate in your own business, big or small, or even in your personal life to deepen your relationships with your team, your clients, your fans, your followers, and your loved ones. Here's the conversation. Tam, thank you so, so much for agreeing to come on my show. I, I just can't wait to share your, you know, many years in the entrepreneurial space wisdom. Uh, I know that, you know, the audience uh, cannot wait to hear, you know, how you built your brand. And I want to kind of start, I guess, from the beginning, if you're comfortable with that. Sounds good. <laughs> Wonderful. So um, I want to ask you, because, you know, many people have been asking me this question, and especially when it comes to, you know, a mogul that has created from scratch a company that, you know, has always been online, you know, from the right. foundational level all the way up to scaling to kind of where you have. Um, so this question is just natural to ask you from the get go. I'd like to ask you what leadership means to you. Like, do you have a definition or an ideology that you can share with our viewers? Absolutely. I mean, 
I'm someone that wears a lot of hats. Like I'm a woman that's also a wife. I'm a mother. I'm a teacher. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm an influencer. I'm a boss. So I think it, I think leadership can look different depending on what hat I'm wearing. Um, as a mother, it means being someone that my daughter can look up to, um, someone that she can kind of trust, someone that would set an example to show her that it's important to do what's right, even if that's a hard thing to do. Um, I think as a wife, it means being a team player not necessarily being the leader, but knowing when to step back, knowing when to allow my husband to lead um, and, and kind of being a partner rather than a leader. Um, and then as a businesswoman, as dress your face, um, I feel like it means being innovative and thinking outside the box and creating that path for myself to inspire others to do that for themselves and sharing the knowledge. I am an educator and that's a huge chunk of what leadership means to me, um, showing the path and allowing others to attain that type of success and, and those qualities for themselves as well. And, and to be able to elevate everyone so we can all learn, we can all grow, and we can all kind of share that space. Um, I mean, the list goes on and on, honestly, like as women, we wear so many more hats than what I just listed, and we can do a lot of that at the same time. But I think the bottom line is, no matter what role that you're playing and no matter how many hats you're wearing at the same time, I think the most important thing is showing up and killing it, like at, at any level. I think that's the biggest thing um, that I can take away from leadership. Absolutely. And you've definitely done that, girlfriend, you know, on all kinds of levels. It's, you know, you made a decision to move to L.A. because you knew that it would be the right place for you to be, considering that you're in the glamour industry and that you just, you know, and you had a certain very, um, very authentic, different, unique concept on what beauty meant, what makeup was all about. You've, you know, completely changed the game in terms of, you know, just the Tamanna eye, for example, you know, <laughs> you're so famous for it. We all, we all have the Tamanna eye today, you know, as women so around the world. <laughs> That's hilarious. Thank you. Absolutely. So, you know, I, I want to ask you something that, you know, a lot of people probably, you know, don't think about asking um, people who are in the beauty business, but I think it's more important in your industry than probably any other, other than perhaps the um, entertainment business. And that is that, you know, in your opinion, you know, the idea of being able to communicate effectively with your community of fans as well as your client of fans is extremely important as a, you know, as the person that's the face of your brand, as well as the fact that you are an owner, you're a businesswoman of the company that, you know, the brand goes out in. So what is your opinion um, in terms of the idea of being able to communicate effectively you know, to your community of fans and to your community of clients, you know, with those two roles, business owner, as well as, you know, the brand ambassador? I think it's twofold. I feel like, first of all, being able to um, engage and regularly communicate with your fan base builds a relationship with you, like on a very personal level. Um, it can build then that relationship with the brand that you are carrying and that you're creating, especially since people can relate to a human being a lot easier than relating to the idea of a brand or like a larger entity. Um, so like with that, people can grow to love and respect you. And that correlates with the type of brand support you can expect from those loyal fan base. Um, that you that you've built and then on the other hand like with social media for example building that social media presence requires you to be steadily and consistently communicating with those followers and that will you know grow your social media presence that will grow your um like engagement on your posts and your performance on your posts which will in turn grow your following so i think those are the two biggest things when it comes to the importance of being able to openly communicate with your followers and kind of showing your face once in a while too to have that type of personal connection with your audience and yeah and that's really changed the game that kind of ideology or that ideology of holistic leadership so this is not like a corporate leadership stance it's a very holistic I like, I like that term <laughs> right you know holistic and it's leadership yeah I, I love that you like that because you know the open just confidence academy which you know we um soft launched last 
um, last month, the entire concept behind it is holistic leadership and advocacy. And, you know, and being able to provide people with, you know, a three-step um, success um, you know, concept, which starts with the knowledge piece, then uh -huh. goes into the execution piece, because, you know, without action, the knowledge means nothing. Like you need to be able to action the knowledge, right? And right. then from the knowledge, you know, a lot of people, when they get kind of stuck in that space where, you know, they go from knowledge to action, and then they kind of aren't motivated to know how to then kind of take it to the next level to benefit their lives, you know, be it professional or personal. So I always felt having worked with a lot of, you know, C-suite executives, um, entrepreneurs like yourself, um, I've always noticed that the piece that's been missing, that is the piece that when I work with them, that it makes the difference is the accountability piece. So, you know, um, Understanding that I think is really important in understanding how to ensure that the ecosystem that you build as a business um, is predicated on some of these things. So again, for people out there who are listening or maybe who have just joined us, we are talking to the fabulous Tamana Roshan. She is the founder of Dress Your Face, a, an incredible education centric online portal and platform. Um, she has an incredible ecosystem of clients, fans and followers that, you know, rely on her to be able to educate them on beauty, on hair and just on holistic living. This is something you do. This is, um, a, you know, a big part of what you do, Tam. I mean, you let people in behind, you know, the curtain of your life. And yeah. that's also a big piece of you know, what we talk about here and why I decided that I wanted to launch this show, the Transform Your Confidence show. I wanted to give people the opportunity to not just, you know, look at the academic piece of what they need to learn in business, but look at brands and look at businesses and look at experts out there who are actually doing it but also incorporating it as part of their life. And you do this. You are one of those people that you can always rely on being there to educate, to motivate, to elevate, to ensure that people are getting the value that they are coming to you for, but also feeling like, I know this woman. Like, I know who she is. She shares her entire life with us. Right. Yeah. And this, this, this is, this is what I define as holistic um you know leadership and this is something that you've been doing since the beginning it's just been a part of of the whole journey for me before it became like a thing and you know and you know i started before social media was like a huge thing and i think that was a great um, opportunity for me to kind of utilize that traditional uh, method of growing a business outside of the online community and then using those skill sets to then kind of readapt it into this online community and and bringing them in and I think because I did start kind of very organically like that um, the people that have built the relationship with me from the beginning have become so close to me that I feel like it's just very natural for me to let them in all the way and and it's also like you have to read the room right like you have to know what they want to know you need to know when to stop or when to give more and i feel like that's one of my strengths i kind of know what they need because i overly communicate with them and i know what they want and i take their suggestions to heart and i i give them whatever they want they want my family i'll give them my family they want more makeup <laughs> i give them that Whatever it is that they're looking for, that's what I want to provide on my platforms. And I actually want to bring a point there that, um, you know, you just shared here that I want to make sure people don't miss. Um, and that is that communication is not just about what you put out there. It's about what you're listening and hearing that's coming back to you. Right. I mean, communication is a two way street. And, and, you know, it's clear that this is something that, you know, people like you who have grown organizations, you know, without venture capitalist help, without all of, you know, the traditional ways of growing businesses, you've grown it extremely from the ground level up. Um, and I, and I feel, that, uh, you know, very much that, you know, the strength of what you've built has, has been a lot to do with you understanding that communications, effective communications as a leader is a two-way street. It is you listening 
and for you know other people who are part of your ecosystem you know telling you feeling comfortable to share what it is that that they want to hear from you what they want to get from you it's so important that people understand that and they and 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 they and they get that the defining difference between being someone that communicates and being someone that is an effective leadership um centric communicator is that they understand that equally important if not more is listening to what your community is saying to you and you have done that just better than most sweetheart you really oh. have <laughs> thank you thank you absolutely so this actually brings me to my next question and tam um i want to kind of you know dive a little bit into your ecosystem when it comes to your fans your followers and your and, and your clients you have a fan community on instagram like no other i mean they are roaring fans of yours and you also have a very very robust client community on your membership website as well where where you do a lot of your you know subscription based education why do you have these two different places um because a lot of people are understanding they need to do this now because yeah. anything can happen with social media and all of a sudden your business is gone this has been something i feel that you've known from the get go and it shows that you are really really um effective innovative leader that you understand that you need to exist in both places on and off social media Absolutely. so talk, talk about that a little bit because you've done that from the get go yeah i mean i had to because there was no real social media like there wasn't a way to monetize social media at the time and there wasn't social media when i started i mean i think it was like friendster and myspace and no one was monetizing that at all right when i got onto facebook that's when everything kind of started um and and blew up so i i mean here's the thing if you don't have a separate website, a separate platform aside from your social media group. Let's say even if you make all of your money on social media, which I basically do. I'm mm -hmm. migrating them from social media to these other platforms and the reason why that's so important is I mean it, to one first of all is what you just said. Social media isn't going to be around forever. Things are constantly changing. Algorithms change. Sometimes right. it's just a pure fail of a month and sometimes it's just incredible and you just don't know um how it's going to be when you have your own platform you now own all the information on your platform on Instagram yes you have your insights yes you have an amazing way to communicate with your audience with your potential clients um i definitely use Instagram for most of my well almost all of my communication because i hear back um and i'm able to post polls and questions and all that stuff but i know nothing about my fan base and my clients except for what's written on insights in order to own the emails and effectively communicate off instagram and right. to convert your followers into clients and um effectively communicate in that sense you need to have their emails and you need to own all that information and by doing that and by having your own website you're able to do that you own nothing on Instagram right so that was the biggest thing for me to build my own platform my platform is a tutorial platform right and a lot of people a lot of naysayers were like what are you doing there's youtube just go on youtube it's free and then you'd earn money on ad revenue and sponsorships and i'm just like but do you own the emails no do you have any information as to who your clients are you're just relying on your views to move your clients onto whatever website you're working on let me just have my own website and right. take control over my audience and have you know a safe place for me to build my world regardless of what's happening on the online world and those people that wind up on your website as your clients are the most loyal people that's that niche that's like that go the golden group that you can always rely on and that's going to stay loyal and without having that email communication without having that information that very valuable information you're not going to be able to grow your business so smart sweetheart i mean you are so smart it's it's you know one of the many reasons other than the fact that you are just incredibly talented and diverse with your talent and very giving with your talent you know you're you're a smart businesswoman i mean a lot of people are looking at trying to see how are they going to convert their social media 
people that they realize now they don't own them. They don't have any power over them. And if these platforms all of a sudden decided to change an algorithm or whatever, all of a sudden their engagement changes drastically. You know this. You've been oh, in yeah, the game. It's happened a million and times. You are a social media grandma. You've been there since the game. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about that. I mean, a lot of people also, when they're trying to build their business, don't know the difference between fans and clients. Do you communicate differently with fans versus, you know, on, on your social media versus your clients on your, you know, website platform? Can you, can you give us some insight there? Sure. I mean, I think it's a little bit different depending on what business you're in and what realm you're in or who you are as a person. Me, we talked about this. I'm a very, very like down to earth, very, um, I'm a person that people can relate to. I kind of, I get on your level. Um, and I use Instagram to communicate with both groups because Instagram is where I do all my marketing. So I know that like 99% of my client base are my Instagram followers or people who have seen my Instagram posts. Right. So, I communicate in a way and I, I personally, I'm very informal. I love to treat my fans and clients as if they are an extended part of my family. I really let them in, which is what we talked about originally. Um, and we built a very unique relationship. Like as an educator, I have earned their respect. They see me in a high regard, but I can also be seen as their BFF that they can just have access to 24 seven, they can just hop onto Instagram, see my stories and literally hang out with me right. throughout my day. So we have this like really, really beautifully blended relationship based on the type of communication that, that I do when it comes to, you know, when I have to promote something, let's say business wise, I'm putting out makeup tutorials and, and sometimes flyers if there's a sale, but I don't keep those up. Um, but I'm doing a lot of like educational posts and then I'll throw in a sprinkle of my family, a sprinkle of the, the love and the joy and the, the feels. And that brings the community really close because they can relate to that kind of stuff. Right. So for me, it's really communication is, is really about balancing those two roles that I play in their life. And, um, and communicating enough in both ways to not lose one over the other. Because we have to remember not everyone is a client, right? Right. I mean, if everyone was a client, I would not be just like sitting here. I'd be on top of the world and some like maybe private plane kind of, you know, chatting with you. Um, but bottom line is that that balance is really what keeps the other part of it alive, right? Mm. So it just works together. And I think a lot of people who are in my shoes as an influencer turned business mobile, it's important to keep both and not forget about that that uh, personal part of your life. Um, but it's different though, what I was saying is different if you're not an influencer, if you're just a brand owner, you may wanna communicate on a little bit of a less personal level, but still being able to collect data and information from your followers by asking questions and things like that. Right, right. But you know, I think there's another um, layer to who you are um, in the public eye as well, uh, in addition to all of this. And you're also a content pr provider, like you provide people with a lot of knowledge and, and, and content um, even if a person wasn't to come to your website and become one of your clients, um, there's a huge focus and emphasis, you know, online on your Instagram, um, where you give, you know, even people who aren't clients, you just give everyone so much. And, and this is a great, you know, you know, and a lot of people are, you know, feel that, you know, well, you know, if I'm giving so much for free, then why would people come to me, um, you know, for the things that I do? you know, that require payment. And, you know, my ideology has always been that the high touch, one-on-one -on -one, um, accountability piece, action piece of wanting to become an educator or wanting to learn more is more than watching someone do it. And this is this is where, you know, looking at your videos on your Instagram versus actually learning from you step by step are two very different 
um, you know, scenarios in terms of how people work with you and relate to you and are invested in you. So I love that you're one of those um, businesses and those um, personalities that really do kind of share a lot and give a lot of your knowledge just out there for people. Because at the end of the day, what I've learned is the more you give, the more people want to be a part of your ecosystem. That's is what that, it is. Yeah, yeah. That's what it is. I and mean, ultimately, it, it boils down to that. Um, originally, I've always just kind of been a, a box of information and constantly just spitting out educational posts and, and inspirational posts. And, um, and like I said, I have to remember, not every follower is a client. Some followers literally maybe they don't want to pay, maybe they can't pay, maybe they need that outlet, they need someone to look at and to learn from and to maybe escape from their own situation at home or in their life. Um, and I wanna be that person, I wanna be, I want that page where people can come and constantly just like grow in their mind or in their own skill set or whatever it is. And I want my information to be attainable and, um, and be able to provide to everyone regardless of if they're paying or not. And that's one of the reasons why even on my, my pay site, there's a whole page of free full length classes unedited um, that they can access my actual classes from A to Z. There's 10 wow. classes there. Each class is like two hours long. So that's 20 hours of learning. Um, and I feel like that's, an, uh, you know, some people may not want to do that because they're like, well, then what is there to buy? You know, you basically learn everything. Um, from your classes, but but you don't. But so you have so much. Yeah, yeah. I have like exactly. I have so much to give. Yeah, and mind you, like twenty years of experience. You're not going to learn in twenty hours. Right. You're going to learn a lot in twenty hours because every class is so jam packed with information. But that's the other thing about it. Watching one class, you're not going to absorb everything. And there's so many looks and there's so many trends that are continuously evolving. And I want to be able to show all that. And people who then see my class want to learn more and want right. to go to that next step. And they're like, holy crap, like she is a good communicator. She can teach in a way that I can grasp. I think I want to be a member. And that's what turns into sales ultimately. So, right. you know, and they say, you know, the more you give, the more you receive. Obviously, like you don't want to go in with that mindset. And I'm very, I'm a very spiritual person. I don't go into things thinking that, oh, I'm going to get 10 times more out of it if I, if I just give. No, I give because I wholeheartedly want to give. I want to mm -hmm. help the community. I want to elevate the community. I know that it's not going to hurt me. And then in turn, karma comes back and elevates your business right and that's the key here right that you know a lot of people have this kind of scarcity mindset where they feel oh my god if i give everything like you know they're not going to come to me but i think um you know a true leader you know a, a true expert understands that you know it's a cultivating relationship it's kind of like you know when you go to learn spirituality from a guru you can sit there for 10 hours right and get 10 hours of time from them but it's that continuous long-term relationship with them that right that that's the where the true value is and this is why working with you in you know your uh, membership site in that ecosystem is so valuable for people that take you know learning about beauty and makeup seriously like if you're serious this is when people need to be a part of your world long term and I really be able to deep dive. And, and, and what I love about you, Tam, is that you are, you know, you understand that there's those people who, you know, want to know, you know, the before and after and they want to know a little bit and they just love that part of it. And those are your fans. Those are people that follow you. Right. But then there's people that really take this series that they truly understand that you are exceptional at what you do and they just want to really be a part of your world long term and that's the big difference here that people need to kind of you know see where they want to fit in and i know because i know you personally you're fine with either yeah i mean i'm happy to be a place of inspiration or i'm happy to be your actual mentor right you know? and that's and the difference places, yeah exactly and and I'm, I'm like i said i'm okay with both people have their own needs and I'm here for them either way. 
Absolutely. Hear, hear to that, sweetheart. <laughs> Holistic leadership. That's what it's all about, right? <laughs> Uh, God knows we need it, especially after, you know, the year we've had and the oh year God, we're yeah. still having, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. so, so let me ask you this. Um, for those who are, in, you know, aspiring entrepreneurs, what are three steps that you would tell them that are the most important to implement to ensure that they are building the foundation of their brand and company strong mm -hmm. from the ground level up? Mm, okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, once you... Once you know what business you're getting into, once you have an idea and or you've you know figured out a solution to a problem or whatever your idea is, um, I think it's important to understand your niche, um, to understand who your audience is, and really study them. Um, I and I think it's also very important to have a niche. It's right. very easy to create something for everyone. The idea of it is very easy, right? But it's very hard to get a piece of the pie when there's so much of a broad spectrum of products that fit that exact same thing or so many people that can, you know, use the exact same thing and there's all sorts of competition or whatever. You're a small fish in a big sea in that way. Right. When you choose a niche or when you know what niche you're already dominating in, like for me, for example, I'm that I'm the South Asian, you know, influencer. That's how I started off. And I knew my niche. I knew that my people like drama. They love that Bollywood glam. They love the Arabian eye. They love that Middle Eastern flair. Those are the people that I need to focus on. Right. And I dominated in that category. I was mm -hmm. literally one of the very first in that category and I maintained that presence even though now there's so many and I and I did pave the way for a lot of these people and a lot of them have credited me for that and I think that's a beautiful thing right um, so you know knowing your niche if you have a niche knowing your niche understanding where you can dominate and and take advantage of the fact that you are probably one of a few that can really um I guess, uh, give an adva advantage to this group of people. Um, I think the next thing is, of course, building your social media presence. Mm -hmm. I've been the social media queen, and I feel like that's one of the biggest, biggest pieces of building a, a proper empire in this day and age. If right. you are not on social media, you might as well not exist. And that's mm -hmm. the hard truth. Yeah. Um, right now, you know, and, and so it's important to grow on social. And I, I'm sure you guys noticed too, several years back when all these, um, classic beauty brands like Lancome and, um, Maybelline, Estee Lauder, all these brands that were like used by our mothers and grandmothers, all of a sudden had to speed up and get on social media and how, all you know they've done amazing these brands have done amazing but in the beginning there was a huge disconnect yes because they just didn't know what kind of content to put out and what this generation would be interested in so it's very important to understand that and i think right. nowadays people do get it i mean it's been around long enough where you kind of know what could work and what may not work um for social media purposes but basically build your social media create posts that have meaning and that can resonate with that niche audience that you are targeting. So right. it's not really about being, you know, creating posts that everyone can relate to. Focus on that targeted audience that is going to be your ideal customer for your brand and speak to them because mm. that's what's going to translate to sales ultimately. And, you know, the third thing I would say, be consistent and engage. Right. Oh my gosh. That's communication with them. Yes. And that's what's going to grow not only your brand and your um, business, but your social media presence, which can in turn become the, one of the biggest marketing tools you have. And it's free marketing. So yes. it's just, it's, there's so many benefits to doing those three things together. Absolutely. You hear, you heard it right here, guys. I hope you have pen and paper. If not, I want you to. <laughs> I want you to rewind this back and I want you to stop it and I want you to write down the three points. You just heard it from a lady who has grown her business from nothing to what it is today. She dominates 
as you guys know, the number one beauty educator in the world today. Oh <laughs> I mean, it's, it's the truth, sweetheart. I mean, what does it feel like when you hear that? Because, you know, you work, you're constantly working, you work hard, you're always, you know, connecting with your clients, with your followers. Um, do you take a moment to just smell the roses and realize what you've actually built? <laughs> you know what's funny is COVID forced me to really reflect and I think a lot of us have felt this way in 2020, like along with all the hardships and the crap that we've had to endure this past year, mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of us have a whole new level of appreciation for what we do have. And we are able to slow down and really reflect on the journey. Right. And that's exactly what I did. I, I really took this time. I mean, I have this online business, which maintains its you know steadiness throughout COVID because it is an online business. Thank God for that. Yes. But half of my business was completely on hold. I couldn't do master classes anymore. I couldn't touch mm -hmm. clients anymore, see anyone in person, and that you know it hurts my soul not having that physical connection that face-to-face -face connection with the people who have supported me absolutely um, so it was important for me to kind of look back at those moments and not just focus on like right now oh crap like i don't have you know these moments anymore um but i did i did a lot of reflecting and i i think that um that's what really inspires me to continue doing exactly what i'm doing right. um, Exactly. And even my husband, like there's a lot of moments where we just look at each other and we're like, holy crap, do we really just do this? Like my husband's my partner. He's been, you know, my rock throughout the whole thing. And even though I'm the one that's like hands on and constantly in your face, you know, he's the one that really I bounce off ideas with and he helps me to manage all, you know, the load. Um, and we sit back and we, we're constantly just so grateful. I mean, not just for the whole business thing, but being grateful for having a family and being able to be together during COVID and during all these crazy times and, and really just be appreciative of every little thing. And, Absolutely. And, and, and I guess knowing, I'm so sorry. <laughs> and knowing that we do have like this connection with our audience where we can still provide that, um, that safe space on my page that 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 space where you can feel really inspired and happy and positive where i know that people are going through such hard times in their life right now and mm -hmm. even though we felt like we were hit really hard by covid um half of our business not happening there are people who have it a billion times worse and yeah. being a place where they can come to to forget about their issues or even finding solutions to their issues and a lot of it is just right here, your mindset. Yes. So I've been focusing a lot on that this past year on my social media is, is setting that example of being that person that can block out the negativity or use the bad things to then turn into an opportunity to create good in your life. And so right. I feel like a lot of people um, have been telling me that lately that they've been coming to my page for that inspiration, for that positive note and leaving more happy. And, and there it is again. Um, it's, you know, it's all over today's episode, folks, holistic leadership and advocacy you are a testament to that and you know it was when we started the conversation tam it, you know you said oh my god i love that but it's what you've been doing with your career and your personal life the whole time this is who you are and this is and these are the types of leaders folks that are going to change our society that are going to elevate the way that we think about our lives and each other and and this connection that keeps going you know throughout this you know conversation that i'm having with tam you know connection 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 communication two-way street yeah. you know reflecting on your life looking at how it compares to what's happening out there in the world these are important things that we need to look at because these are the things that are going to help us together weather the storm right tam 100 percent, 100 percent, and knowing what they need from you right like, i can't just be shoving sales down people's throats like I'm still obviously promoting, this is my bread and butter. I have to of do it. Course. To survive. Right. But I'm being very sensitive to their needs and I'm being that source 
that people can come to to fulfill their needs right. without having to pay, without having to bend over backwards for it. So, you know, understanding what's needed at the right time, you know, we're all in this like very strange age and maybe some people just don't know how to adjust their communication or their output to better reflect what people need. Um, but I'm just gonna say it, like they, they don't need that in your throat advertising right now. They don't need that crazy, like, that pressure, that social pressure or, or any of that. It's really just, they need a place to vent. They yeah. need a place to unload. Maybe they need a place to be inspired again or to escape, you know? So just know what, what role you play and provide that to them. Absolutely. And that actually brings um, another question to my mind, Tam. Um, are there any don't do's you would like to share with our audience when it comes to, oh, you're, 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 you're smiling already. <laughs> when, when it comes to engagement strategies online um, between yeah. like, you know, the service providers and the potential customer, you've just finished saying that, don't be over salesy. Yeah. You know, what have you learned maybe perhaps through your journey or even things that you see that are happening out there that for you are like no-nos? I mean, again, it, it does depend on, you know, what avenue you're in. But I think the biggest thing when it comes to like the online engaging, um, first of all, to do, you definitely want to, and I touched on this earlier, create posts that resonate, create posts that have meaning that can inspire. Like there's two big types of posts that really resonate with people. One is educational where they can gain something out of it. Yeah. And one is inspirational where they can feel something out of it. Mm -hmm. And it's like, if, if you're, and it's okay to post things that are just silly too. Like it's okay to do that if that's what works for your brand, but to, to have enough, very, very valuable information on your page is really what's going to retain that loyal audience so that they can continue to come back and hit that follow button. And actually, mm -hmm. you know, be a part of your online life um, and know what's appropriate for your page. And I just talked about that too. Like read the room, know what they need from you, give them what they need. Um, and of course, like when it comes to advertising, like I said, I'm still advertising, I'm doing all that stuff. But as soon as the sale is over, I'm deleting all those posts because I don't need that to stay in your face. Right. And I'm not overly, you know, a lot of people email me, like a lot of brands, let's say they email me to do ads for them as an influencer right um, don't email me to do ads do shout outs and i literally will only pick out of maybe a hundred emails i will pick one that wow. might respond to to get to the next step and even then even a smaller percentage is actually going to wind up on my page because i have to maintain that trust with my audience right so of for course. me the big don't is to just accept all sorts of stuff to be on your page and let them all live on your page I want my page to be so beautiful and inspirational, not just aesthetically, but the, you know, the, the content behind it. And when I'm doing an ad or when I'm talking about one of my products or one of so-and-so's products, it's really got to mean something to me. And it's got to, it's got to have a history with me, like a personal connection so that mm -hmm. I, when I talk about it, I'm being a hundred percent honest and my readers and my viewers, they see that they see how organic I am about who I choose to talk about and not talk about. And they trust that and they go mm -hmm. for that. And that's what makes my posts, you know, convert even more um, into even more sales. Um, but when it comes to like, as a brand do's and don'ts, I feel, and here's one that's like, a little cringy okay tell me so, share girlfriend here's the tea so if you are a brand um especially when you're still building your brand presence and your personality right um there's been a lot of times especially now people are very sensitive to stuff and and people are seeing enough negativity out there that they don't want or need to see it on your page i've seen so many instances where companies have um lashed out on a certain situation, let's say another brand has stolen your idea or mm -hmm. another person has copied your whatever it is, right? But you're putting it out to the public and like, so-and-so did this, please report this page or please do this. Don't get to that level. That is so unbelievably petty. 
unless mm. you are just like an influencer, right? And you're just a person and it is what it is. But even then I stay away from things like that. When you're a brand, you have to maintain that um, respect factor and that professionalism. So to bring in negative things into your page only draws more attention to the negative and it makes you look very weak as a business owner or as a page manager. So stay away from that kind of stuff. That's um, a big one. It Tam. is big. And a lot of people don't talk about that because it's not really business related kind of, but it is because it can hurt you. Yes. And people have, like I said, become so sensitive during the pandemic that they just lash out at any, you know, moment. And it's important to take that step back and realize that this is not appropriate right. for your page as a brand owner. Um, so that's one thing that I've been seeing a lot of lately that just, again, so cringy. And I'm just, I wish I could just jump out and be like, stop, like erase this right now. It's not worth it. Right. Um, another thing is, you know, filling up your page with just nonsense, right. um, you know, or too much of one thing. Right. So like mm -hmm. if you are, let's say a, a lifestyle brand, it makes sense to post quotes and to post people and things like that. It's a lifestyle. It's a vibe. If you are a makeup brand or, you know, whatever product brand, it may not make sense to constantly post irrelevant quotes and memes and things like that. Even though you think it's going to get likes and it's going to get engagement because it's so funny. And even if it does get engagement and likes, are those engaged, are those likes going to actually translate to sales for your brand? Right. No. Right. It's going to translate to followers. No, because mm -hmm. you're a brand page. You're not a mm -hmm. meme page or a, a inspirational page. So you have to, you focus on your brand and what's appropriate for your brand. And if once in a while you want to mix it up and have some fun, that's fine. If you're looking to see what works for you and what doesn't work for you, but nine out of 10 times that meme you're about to post is really just going to be a fun, uh, high engaged post, which is not going to equate to sales. Right. And it also diffuses the message of your brand. Like people aren't quite sure what you're about. What What is it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Absolutely. So stay away from those kind of things and, and focus yeah. on your brand, focus on your niche, focus on your message and get the point across in meaningful ways. Absolutely. Folks, you heard it right here. I mean, you know, I, I don't know about you, but mentally I've been scribbling down so much of these insights. These are tried and tested experience oriented actionable, uh, you know, knowledge pieces that you can really take to the table. I mean, this is, th these are some of the reasons why, you know, Tam and Dress Your Face is such a successful brand out there. It's very, very, you know, thought of. So think about that, guys, like the communications that, you know, like you just take a look at, you know, what Tam just talked about throughout this entire um, conversation that we had. Also, you go to her brand page on Instagram at Dress Your Face. You'll see that everything she's talking about is, in fact, what she does. Everything has a peop has a purpose, has a meaning, and has an objective. And I think that that's the key difference between people who just have pages and people whose pages are businesses. Right, Tam? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So for anyone out there, as we get ready to close out, <laughs> who after all this information <laughs> still don't understand how important communicating effectively is as a leader, as a business owner, um, even in your personal life, guys, let's face it, right? We need to be able to know how to communicate and what our intention is with our, with our communications because, you know, our relationships needs to be the center focus of everything that, you know, is a part of our value system and what we believe in. Tam, I need to ask you based on that, um, what would you say to people who are not getting it, like in terms of how important it is to be able to effectively communicate as part of the strategy of their personal and professional life? I think the number one thing that's stopping them from really understanding, like they can get it. They can see our interview. They can write the notes. All the information is right in front of them. They can Google it. And there's plenty of blogs about this too. Right. I think the thing that's stopping it from actually coming to fruition for them is their own mind blocks. Mm -hmm. And this is something that I'd like to kind of end this uh, talk on because 
I can keep feeding you all the knowledge in the world. Raj, you can continue being the best mentor to these people. But if their mindset is what's blocking them from attaining that level of success that they are yearning for, mm -hmm. they are not going to get there. Right. And it's not that they just don't get it. It's that they're not allowing themselves to make it happen for them. Right. A lot of the people that I talk to, a lot of the students that I talk to have literally told me, I know this and I know that, but how come it's just not happening for me? And it's because your mental block is stopping you from your potential. You're telling right. yourself that you can't do this. Maybe someone else is also telling you that you can't do that and you're keeping it in the back of your head that, yeah, maybe I can't do that. And you have to remember that if someone is telling you that you can't do something, that is about them. It is not about you. That's because they can't do it. It's right. because they, they tried to do it and they couldn't do it and they can't see that you are going to do it. Mm -hmm. So even our loved ones, even our own family members can be that person unknowingly. They can be projecting their own insecurities and their own failures onto you, even though you have not even started on that same path that, they're, that they've gone on. So don't take their words personally. It's 100% just about them and their lived experiences or right. their non-lived experiences. And you focus on your goals building your road, paving your way, making it happen for yourself. Use me as an example. I had everyone on YouTube and every, all my friends telling me, don't go on and create your own online platform for um, tutorials. No one's going to pay for it. There's YouTube. But I knew my worth. I knew I had a dream, a goal, and I wanted to achieve it. And I did it. I was the first to do it that way and it lasted. So many others have come in and learned from it and figured out maybe it doesn't work for them. Maybe they have a different type of client. Maybe um, it did work for them. In terms of the mindset needed to make sure that you don't listen to the naysayers and that you stay on track with your, um, you know, vision, um, you, you know, you finished telling us that, you know, some of your clients or some people that you speak to say, look, you know, I've got the knowledge, but I just can't seem to be able to action it. And, you know, you said something very, very valuable. It has to do with a shift that you need to make in your mind. So based on that, what would you say to people who are having a challenge with making that shift? What would you say they need, they, that maybe they should think about? One thing that helped me shift my mindset and become more positive instead of allowing all that negative negative uh, feedback to block my head um, is actually visualizing the words. And I, I know this sounds so weird and corny, but when you visualize everything and then visualize a shield, like your protective shield, nothing can penetrate through that. I have my own light. I don't need to find my light anywhere else. I don't need something else to fuel me. Everything I need is right here in my protective bubble and everything that wants to spew out me at me will just be blocked right off. If you have that kind of like a mental picture, it's a lot easier to then think that way. So I, I'm very into visualization. Um, a lot of people are into manifestation. When you're speaking out into the universe, you speak something into truth. Um, you know, this will happen for me. I will become successful. I w this product will be sold. This product will be recognized as one of the best in this market. I just have to make sure that I stand by it and I continue to evolve it if I need to, you know, being flexible also to, you know, shift as needed, but understand that your mental space is the number one thing that's either going to catapult you to success or block you from ever attaining it. So that visualization is really what ultimately helped help, help me. If that can help you, I would give it a try. Anything, anything it takes, buy books about it, read more blog posts about it, surround yourself with positive information and you just start to become that person. You live up to that truth. Absolutely. And you know, the thing is, is that, we're all born the same way and we all die the same way. And this is such a cliche, but it's the truth, Tam. Like, and, and that's the thing that people seem to forget. They always seem to, you know, want to be able to find that kind of magic answer to, you know, life when it's always the same thing, right? It's how you 
action and put effort into building the life that you want to live. Right. And this is a part of what you're saying. There are so many different exercises out there to accomplish that. This isn't new. There is nothing that you're looking for that hasn't already been found by someone out there throughout the ages, throughout the world, throughout doctrines, throughout, you know, different, you know, ecosystems and, you know, ideologies out there. If you are trying to find a way to get over your roadblock, just like Tam said, she has her, you know, her manifestations and her visualizations, which is the key focus for her. If that's not you and you're looking for a different way to be able to do, you know, what you need to be able to pull yourself out of the mind, excuse my language, fuck that you're in. Yeah. Um, it's up there already. Someone's already come up with that solution. You need to put the effort into your own life and go out there and find the solution. Right, Tom? No one's going to find it for you. No one has your best interest except for you. Right. You know? And everyone has their own things that they're dealing with. No one's going to sit down and be like, here, this is what you need to do, and let's hold your hand through it. You have to man up and, and do it. Yeah, Actually, absolutely. I'm sorry. Don't man up. Woman up and do it. <laughs> Woman up and do it. <laughs> Woman up and do it because, you know, that's a whole other type of, other ball you know, <laughs> yeah, that's a different ball game. That's a, a, a very different journey of elevation um, because there's so many ways that we have had our minds shut off of as women throughout society, throughout all the different ways that we've been asked to live in a box that isn't right for us to live in. So I'm um, here, here to that, Tam. Tam. <laughs> You are absolutely sensational. It's clear why you've been able to build an entire global ecosystem around your ideology and your belief system. You are true and authentic to what you believe in. You know, behind the, you know, behind the curtain, in front of the curtain, you're the same person. I can attest to that because I've seen you in both places. The whole world has seen you in both places. This is not something that's, you know, elite just to the few. Tam is out there, you know, communicating with people all the time, probably one of the best um, entrepreneurs I know out there in the world that communicates consistently and authentically, folks. She is the one to follow. At Dress to Your Face, you got to go check her out. And I'm not just saying that. I'm not blowing your whistle, sweetheart. I truly believe in the words I say. I never say anything that I don't believe in. And I take, um, you know, what I share and who I bring on um, very, very seriously, because there's a lot of people out there, Tam, that need help right now at this moment in, in time, at this moment in history. And that's what people like you, leaders like you, you know, are important to be able to step into that role, to be able to inspire and motivate as you yourself, as you said earlier on, you know, are looking back and reflecting on your journey and, you know, looking at where you're at right now and knowing and having faith in and I'm not putting words in your mouth, I know you believe in this, having the faith that what is to be is going to be better. Am I right? 100%. Absolutely. Faith, trust, and and just knowing that it's, it's not always about the destination, it's about the journey. And I know that sounds so cliche, but that's so true. It is. It is because you can't really get to the destination if you're not planning on taking the trek down that journey. Right, girl? 100%. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so, so much for, you your, much for your time, sweetheart. I really, really Lots appreciate it. Like everything that you've said, like I'm going to rewind this and write it all down as well, Aww. to be very honest. <laughs> Thank you Thank so, you. so much for coming on the show. And, you know, you know you're coming back on. We're going to be like, you know, deep diving the whole other conversation. We'll be regular. <laughs> it's going to happen. Thank you, sweetheart. Really, Thank really you. appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Bye, darling. Bye. Mwah. And that's a wrap, guys. Thank you so much for staying till the end. I really hope you enjoyed the show and will action the many insights that were shared. You'll always hear me say that knowledge without action doesn't change a thing, and it doesn't. I really, really hope that you feel motivated and inspired through the conversation that I had, the deep dive that I had with the manna about how she has created and scaled her business. I hope that you'll take those tips and that you'll see where in your specific area 
of your business or even of your personal life that this is going to be of value to you. And if this show is of value to you, I would really appreciate you subscribing to the podcast on whatever podcast platform you're on. I'd also love for you to go to the YouTube channel at the Open Chess Confidence Academy and subscribe there as well because I really want your support and I, I would really appreciate you sharing this information with everyone out there you know if this is something that you feel is of value to you and will be of value to them. Until next week, I hope you continue to cultivate your own ecosystem so that literally everyone around you can be empowered by the mission that you have to elevate your life, the people that you love, and everyone in and around your ecosystem. And I'll see you next week.